What's going on, guys? It's Danny from Fancy Stock Exchange here. And today, I'll be talking about the number one asset you should be targeting in all of your Dynasty Leagues. I got the salmon shirt on today, so y'all know I am ready to spit the facts. And absolutely no, I'm not here to talk some dusty, duddy veteran running backs. The asset that is currently the most misappropriated on the market is the one, the only, 2024 draft capital. In today's exercise, I'll be breaking down the macro and micro levels of why you need to collect these picks and going through realistic deals that have gone through involving these picks. Before we get into it, as always, we're going to hit that intro. On this channel, you all have probably heard me bitch and whine about staying as liquid as possible when you're not hard stuck in a contending window. The most liquid asset that is currently available is a pick or a bond that cannot be realized into 2024, talking about 2024 draft capital. The biggest problem in Dynasty that I find in many Dynasty players is that they view these picks as potential future players or players they can't use right now or players that are so far out from contributing on their dynasty teams. You should be targeting that uncertainty and testing your league mate's patience level. Be fluid, be water, like I always say, and 2024 unrealized picks are one of the best ways to do so. We understand from a macro level idea that as we get closer to rookie drafts, rookie fever and fear of missing out will always reside in dynasty managers. Collecting 2024 capital now while people are in that so far out mindset uh, will inherently reap rewards the closer we get to that class and the closer we get to prospect type doing its job, whether you cash in those picks, take couple players in a stud class, or potentially flip those picks in the future for veteran players that you wouldn't have considered possible today. Everybody on the Dynasty scene knows about this heralded upcoming 2023 draft class, and I could have made a whole separate video entirely on that gold mine class coming up, which, by the way, if you're interested in that, if you're interested in a deep dive on that 2023 class, let me know in the comment section. The reason why I kind of want to do 2024 first is, to put it simply, not a lot of people are talking about these 2024 picks. Not a lot of people are talking about what projects to be a considerably strong class and transitioning from the macro level of this idea of acquiring this capital. Let's talk about the micro level of this analysis. Let's talk about just exactly what are we in store of for this upcoming 2024 class. And I understand that trying to project 19 year olds two years away from the NFL is a volatile and variable task that has a lot of things that can go wrong, a lot of downside risk potentially that may go wrong uh, from a pure, pure micro level for a lot of these players. But right now, this projects to be a potential phenomenal league-changing, dynasty league-changing type of class. And again, if you guys want more information, a more deep dive, longer form type of video on this class, I can do so as well. But looking at the top of this class, you guys can see current Debbie ADP, which by the way, if you guys are unfamiliar with Debbie, it's basically a version of Dynasty Fantasy Football where you can roster college football players for when they come to the NFL and they will automatically basically be in a taxi squad uh, for your NFL team. But in Debbie drafts, a lot of priority is placed on the upcoming class, the oncoming level of talent, kind of combating that variability, that volatility, as I said, because Again, taking players that are projecting to the NFL sooner is a less risky clause to be able to do. But you guys can see, despite that inherent bias, despite the bias of preferring um, players coming in sooner, eight of the top 23 current selections in Devi drafts are actually from this heralded 2024 class. And you guys can see some of the top names that I highlighted here, Travion Henderson, Caleb Williams, Quinn Ewers, Xavier Worthy, Braylon Allen. Brock Bowers, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Will Shipley in particular. Um, Let's just outline some of these uh, potential players and project some of these names in terms of what they could potentially be coming into the NFL 
coming in as prospects. So let's start off with the first name on the list, the number two overall running back in Debbie period right now. And that's going to be Travian Henderson running back from the Ohio State Buckeyes. And just talking about this guy's profile, talking about his freshman campaign, he was more productive in his freshman campaign than B. John Robinson, the undisputed number one overall player in Debbie right now. Trayvon showed a level of nuance as a receiver, a level of production as a receiver that we typically don't see materialize in elite running backs in their first year at college. This is a player that was able to have 27 receptions, a 27 reception output in his freshman season at OSU. That usurps a guy like J.K. Dobbins, who was at OSU, a top 50 pick in the past. I mean, way more than Jonathan Taylor saw prior to his final season in college. Travian Henderson showed a level of production and receiving upside that we typically don't see from running backs at such a ripe age. So he's the clear consensus 101 right now. And honestly, by the time he comes into the NFL, we could be looking at a future first round startup pick. That is a level of talent. That's the level of upside. And that's the potential draft capital we can see from a guy like Travion Henderson. The number two player in this class, the number two player in ADP is currently Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC. Again, if you're in a one quarterback league, this will differ, but this is specifically for Superflex and projecting potential quarterbacks, potential elite quarterbacks in Superflex is something that is very, very rare. And for a guy like Caleb Williams to come out in his freshman season and be as productive and as show as much talent as he did is truly tremendous. Again, he shows to be a potential elite draft capital quarterback, talking about top five overall level pick in 2024, and has the potential to develop into an elite Konami code rusher at Southern California over the next couple of years. We saw in his freshman year at Oklahoma, he contributed over 500 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns, according to PFF. With two more years of maturing, being in a nice offensive insulated uh, situation over there with Southern California, joining the likes of Lincoln Riley coming over from Oklahoma with them, as well as potential stud wide receiver town on the outside like Jordan Addison, Mario Williams, and USC attracting a ton of potential future five and four-star recruits coming up. I think Caleb Williams is going to be the undisputed Debbie C to C quarterback one by the time that Bryce Young and CJ Stroud are out of college. So um, I think he's going to be a stud. He's got more rushing upside than both of those 2023 20, quarterbacks. And when it's all said and done, if he gets heralded top five draft capital, this is going to be a player that is ranked in the top 10 quarterbacks in dynasty as soon as he comes into the NFL. So I absolutely love Caleb Williams. Think maybe a potential Justin Fields level ascension uh, coming up in the next couple of years. So Caleb Williams, absolute stud prospect. We can see him take that next step with that weaponry that he has available to him over at Southern California. But the next player that we have and a player that was actually the number one recruit coming out of high school is Quinn Ewers, the new quarterback of the Texas Longhorns. And to me, he's the biggest mystery of this class. He did not play really any meaningful snaps at all last year at Ohio State. We saw him transfer to Texas. And yeah, is it a mystery? Is it a question mark given the fact that we haven't seen him produce? Sure, but he possesses all of the talent, as I kind of mentioned, number one overall recruit. And if everything kind of materializing, if all those traits can be shown on display at a big platform such as Texas, we could be looking at another potential top five pick to join with Caleb Williams in that 2024 class. So Quinn Ewers, all the talent in the world, we just need to see that pro production materialize. And if it does, I think that top two quarterbacks from a fantasy upside potential standpoint with Williams and Ewers could really rival Stroud and Young of the 2023 class and would probably be the number one overall pick right now, number one overall quarterback selected right now if they were in the 2022 class talking about elite level upside here. The number four overall player right now, according to ADP, Debbie ADP, is Xavier Worthy, the wide receiver from the Texas Longhorns. And the stud that, quite frankly, will make or break Quinn Ewers' development, I'm more so leaning on the make part because you typically don't see an 18-year-old true freshman walk out at Texas, produce 1,000 yards nearly, and 12 touchdowns, all while just recently celebrating his 19th birthday. He did all of that last year 
at 18 years old, a 2003 born receiver that showed elite level production and should be that way for the next two years. That Ewers worthy Texas connection could be a connection that can potentially break college football within the next two seasons and ultimately result in both of these guys being top 10 NFL draft picks by the time that they commit to the NFL draft. The number five overall selected player, according to Debbie ADP right now, is Braylon Allen, the running back from the Wisconsin Badgers. And if you're getting shades of Jonathan Taylor, just hearing, you know, young, productive running back from Wisconsin, I don't think he's the level of prospect right now that JT was. But from a straight production standpoint, age adjusted production standpoint, Braylon Allen is an absolute stud. Over 1,300 all-purpose yards at Wisconsin this year on a mere 194 touches. So not only did he produce a ton of yardage, he did it at a very, very efficient clip. 6.8 yards per carry in his true freshman season. He played all of 2021. Get this. He wasn't 18. He wasn't 19. He wasn't 20. He was 17 years old throughout the 2021 college season. He just turned 18 on January 18th. So you're telling me a 17 year old kid with a six foot two, 240 pound prototype size production, everything you could look for in a prospect in his first year. And yet he's the number five ADP prospect in this class that shows you how potentially special this class could end up materializing. And I mean, that should tell you all you need to know about his future NFL standing. The fact that he was productive, the fact that he's got the size and he did it all at 17 years old, something that you don't see happen in college football, period. The number six overall current projected player, uh, according to Devi ADP right now, is Brock Bowers, the phenomenal superstar tight end from the Georgia Bulldogs. And Let's just put it simply. Let's put it as is. This freshman Georgia stud would have been the first tight end selected in the 2022 class by a wide margin had he been eligible. Yet, he still has two years of eligibility for the defending college football champion Georgia Bulldogs. And let's just say it as it is. 52nd overall pick George Pickens has a lot of truthers out there. And a lot of them will make the case Georgia doesn't have a lot of volume. Georgia doesn't have a lot of passing volume. Well, Brock Bowers did not care. This guy put up nearly 900 yards and 13 touchdowns in his freshman campaign at the tight end position and projects to possibly be the best tight end prospect we have seen since Kyle Pitts. A lot of love, a lot of respect for him, but he has both the talent and the production profile in his first year to be able to get maybe not Kyle Pitts level, but we could be looking at top 10 draft capital tight end insulated top five tight end in dynasty as soon as he commits to the NFL. So Brock Bowers, an absolute stud. And that is just six guys. I mean, we can go more in depth. I can dive into potential other future studs such as, you know, Will Shipley, a five-star recruit for Clemson who commanded phenomenal volume his first year there, as well as Marvin Harrison Jr., the son of the former NFL legend who, despite not receiving much playing time behind the likes of, you know, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, two top 11 picks this past year, showed in his long, lone game without those two on the field, he can be a productive potential future stud in the NFL. Six for 71 and three it, when all the chips mattered in their bowl game with those two guys out, he performed as that stud number two wide receiver next to JSN. And as I kind of mentioned, 2022, he has the chance to dominate alongside J Jackson Smith and Jigba. And by 2023, he could potentially be the main guy for Ohio State. So I think he's got a lot of potential. I think he's got a lot of talent. And I mean, the fact that we're talking about this as potentially the eighth best player in this class just kind of shows right now how productive some of these guys were in their freshman seasons. And that's not even talking about potential likes of guys like, you know, Donovan Edwards, Raheem Sanders, Mario Williams, JJ McCarthy, a lot of potential studs that can end up materializing as great prospects within the next couple of years. A lot of potential with this class. This class is already looking like it can be a staple, as I said, of fantasy football for years to come. And yet people are currently valuing the capital to acquire these players as next to nothing. And knowing how now, as I kind of outlined, 
some of the potential elite cornerstone assets that we can see being produced in this loaded class. Let's kind of look at what type of deals that these picks are actually being traded and being offered up for. So you guys should be able to see on the screen, uh, according to Deco FF, uh, trades that have actually been materialized with 2024 draft picks. And right off the bat, hearing this video right now, you're probably not going to be able to get a 2024 one for Mitch Trubisky and Donovan Peoples-Jones. But if you're in a more casual redraft centric everybody wants to win now type of league i've seen weird deals go through so if you can potentially trade junk yes junk into future appreciability future liquidity i'm all for it i'm always doing that i'm always looking to create monsters down the line a couple other deals here you're able to flip aaron jones into a 2023 two, a 2024 one and a 2025 three another excellent deal in acquiring liquidity for a future soon to be 28 year old running back that does not have a long shelf life in the NFL left. Other deals here that you can see, we're able to flip Dalvin Cook. You know, that seems like a prime FSC advice type of standpoint. Flipping Dalvin Cook into Kareem Hunt, a 2024-1 and a 2023-2. Excellent work again there. And some of the other deals, Amari Cooper and Alan Lazard for a 1 and a 2. Uh, trading Chris Olave, who I think is a fine prospect, but I don't think is not worth a 2023 one straight up is not worth a 2024 one straight up in my opinion as well and yet you're able to get a 2023 two and 2024 one straight up for chris Olave. easy deal christian watson for a one you guys know our thoughts on watson no brainer here as well as some of these other deals a or aj brown in exchange for ridley and two ones if you're in a productive struggle and you don't need aj brown's year one points right now this is the perfect pivot you can do we know Calvin Ridley, when he's on the field, can be a potential league-winning top 10 to top 5 level producer at the wide receiver position, and you're still able to add liquidity with that 2023 one and 2024 one. I think that is a phenomenal pivot off of a guy like A.J. Brown. And some of the other deals here, Aaron Jones trade-up for the one. You guys know our thoughts on that. As well as the others listed, you guys get the spiel. You guys could look at the graphic. I'll leave it up for a few more seconds, and you guys can kind of soak that and take that in into – quite frankly, how egregiously undervalued these picks are. But either way, if you guys have made it to the end of this video, let me know if you guys would want to see me expand on this 2024 class or potentially outline the upcoming 2023 class in a deep one-to-one -one type of fashion if you wish to see that. I kind of wanted to keep this video shorter, wanted to keep it as a pseudo type of preview into what the market inefficiency with these picks kind of look like. But if, again, you want a full expanded breakdown, I would be happy to contribute that to you guys. If you guys want access to all things Dynasty from myself and Corey over here at FSC, signing up on Patreon right now, lots of tier over above, gets you access to all of our resources for Dynasty, posts for Dynasty, as well as our Dynasty Rankings Manifesto, which outlines our positional rankings, rookie rankings, overall rankings, and bucketed rankings by age. Another way to get access to our Dynasty Rankings Manifesto is by going over to Underdog Fantasy and using promo code FSC at sign up and first deposit. Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100, and you'll also get access to the manifesto. Since you follow FSE, go use your edge and dominate the Underdog Fantasy Best Ball Mania 3 and Puppy Tournaments today, where you can win $2 million and $75,000 respectively if you finish in first place. Again, appreciate you guys for sticking to the end, and I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Peace out.